It's motherfucking leg day. The day after a rest day, my motivation is always boom. And leg day just makes it go boom. So I'm up for this one. I'm really up for this one. I'm feeling good, feeling kind of refreshed. Always feel shit on a rest day. But the day after, get a good night's sleep. Have a good wait before I go to bed. Boom, wake up feeling like a fresh man. Leaving my ego at the door. This is what you guys should do as well. Templates each side on a fucking leg press. And you're using half rep shit. And you know, your form's all over the place. Four, five plates each side on a hack squat. But your depth is atrocious. You know, leave that shit at the door. I don't get why people do that surely you must look online and think yeah this is how i do it correctly like what you are doing i don't know get i don't get how people think that's right where have you seen people do that and think yeah doing half rep on a leg press or doing i mean each to their own at the end of the day for me it's not impressive you know you're just ego lifting and most people that do that type of stuff are the ones that are small if you are really really strong and you're ensuring that you're taking the muscle for its full range of motion i'm pretty sure that 95 percent of people unless you're a genetic freak who's really strong and has no muscle but 95 percent of people that are, are really strong with perfect execution are the ones that look for fucking good like if you think about someone doing five six plates each side on like a cybex hat 12 plates each side on a leg press i'm pretty sure they're fucking big so please leave your ego at the door that's exactly what i'm gonna do i'm, 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 I'm rambling here get us in the gym come on I took a pre-workout, as you can tell. I'm chatting shit. I'll chat shit anyway. Feeling more confident, feeling like, yeah, fuck, I'm ready to swing for someone. You want to fight? Let's fucking do it. <laughs> yeah, I'm joking. I'll get knocked out. So I did think slightly different this time round. Normally, I'd work up to my top set, then I'd do a back off. But what I've decided to do is, I found out recently that I get better as the sets go on. So what I found is that my top set isn't as good as my back off set. Like I'll be doing like on a hack squat, 120 for like six. And then I'll reduce it by 10 kilos and get like double or triple, but the triple the actual uh, amount of reps. So I get better as it goes on. So what I've done first is I've almost done my back off set first. Um, and now I'm going to load a little bit more on my second set just to see if I can actually beat my top set previously um, and this is trial and error I found this out from just experimenting for my training and I always chop and change like I found that I go through phases where my top set is my best set and then my back off set is a back off set for a reason then I found that my back off set is actually better than my top set and I'm going through that phase right now where my back off is actually better than my top but that felt really good ego left at the door no spotting no nothing um, and it felt like so much better so Leave that fucking ego at the door. Feet as low as I can, we want to try and get as much knee flexion 
as possible. And obviously the hole on that on any squat move, that hole is the hardest bit to get out of. So ensure that you're taking it in through the hole and you're explosive out. So I want you to drive your feet into the, the padding or the floor and whatever you want to fucking call it. Moved on to leg press, leg press felt okay today. I'm quite a good leg presser, but today it just weren't there, it just felt heavy around my joints and stuff like that. I think that's a case of just me getting a little bit lighter. Um, but I, I managed to do two kind of low heavy sets anywhere between 8 and 10 then I did a higher rep set of 15 to 20 give that a try because fuck me you've got to be on fire oh good morning morning has broken like the first morning what a way to start the day a little bit of singing from the Georgie boy in my low well I was in a lower school in my county in Bedfordshire we do upper middle and lower school no other county does that it's just i don't even know what it is in other counties believe it or not in my last school I had to, we had to sing it every morning and i look back now i think why did they why on earth did they make us do that like we had to sing in the morning hymns and stuff like that he put the whole world in his hands he's got no, why the fuck was i made to sing that shit it's stuck in me head i don't know why i'm thinking about it this morning guess what oh, it's just same shit in it my fucking camera's all foggy and stuff okay we're back so yeah uh, I don't know, what, what am I chatting about? Guess what, jumper time, you know, same old shit, making a coffee. I've got in the routine of just doing cardio now. When I first started prep, it was like, oh, I've got to go do cardio, I can't be fucked. But now, I just go and do it. Not forced upon or anything like that. I just find it, it's just in my routine to just do cardio now. I try and keep it as far away as possible when it comes from, from a training standpoint. Normally, I train about 2, 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Now, about half past 6 in the morning, so I'm trying to keep the gap as long as possible. People might say, George, do it after your workout. No, I, I don't want to do it after my workout. I want to do it fast. How fucking joyful and happy Easter, by the way, because it's Easter, we bank holiday weekend or whatever it is, fat nose. Believe it or not, I travel 15 miles just to go on a Stairmaster for 30 minutes. I know a lot of people, after hearing what I've just said, will go, why the fuck would you do that? In your head, you're probably thinking, why are you doing that, George? Just use another machine. And you're right, I probably could use a ma an another machine. I could just easily use a bike or a treadmill or a cost trainer, whatever it may be, which is close to gym or whatever. But if someone's prescribed me something, I'm gonna fucking do it. And the Stairmaster for me, cardio wise, is the best piece of kit. You see too many people incline walking and count it as cardio. Absolutely not. You have to work within, for example, 120, 150 beats per minute. Now you try to do that on incline walking and find how hard that is to get that up to 100, 140, 150. It's fucking hard. Stairmaster, give it a couple of minutes, I'm up there. You know what I'm saying? So for anyone, I mean, don't get me wrong, each their own, do your own fucking thing at the end of the day, I don't give a fuck. I just see people incline walking and classing it as cardio, I think, fuck me, I'd rather stroll around the park, mate. Like, what is that? Get some, you want, uh, what I say about cardio is you want to get off after five minutes. For me, that's cardio. You're fucking thinking, this is dreadful. I'm sweating. I smell like shit already. I'm, my, my breathing's heavy as fuck. I want to get off of it. I'm always aggressive, in I, my videos. I need to tone it down a little bit. Tone it down, George. Too aggressive to people. People get put off by that stuff. Podcast of choice is the AJ's podcast made by Morris Podcast. Solo ones are really good. I always say to people in your free time, whether you're doing steps, whether you're doing cardio, it's always invest into your knowledge or invest, invest time into your knowledge as well. A lot of people will go listen to music, which is great. Don't get me wrong, I love listening to music as well. I'm always looking to learn and this goes to someone who wants to be an inspiring coach or something. You have to always look to get better. Even if you are a top coach, the top coaches always look to improve. So you, if you want to get to that stage, you're going to have to do even double double the amount of work so always listen to podcasts always be doing your research watching videos watching youtube sign up to member sites and it will very much reward as usual cardio done last minute i thought i'd bump up to 15 level 15 and see if i can do 15 calories so i'm always looking to improve my almost time i do it in because i think you should and as you get leaner, it will get better. But that is post-leg day cardio done. It's always a little bit harder post legs, especially towards the last 10 minutes or so when your legs, knees do take a bit of a battering, especially when you did train legs yesterday. But no excuses, still get it done. Now I'm gonna do some incline walking. 
went to Tesco's on the way back. We picked up some cod fillets, which are going into the post workout. Main reason behind choosing cod fillets now instead of chicken, I get more to the gram of cod fillet than I do with chicken. Per 140 grams of cod fillet is 25 grams of protein. If I had that with chicken, it'll probably be about 30, 35, maybe 40 grams of protein. I don't know off the top of my head. You can get more volume out of your fish. A little bit more expensive, but it, it kind of is what it is. We also picked up those 10 cow jelly things. I've picked up the cranberry and raspberry one. This one's pretty peng. And I've gone for my favorite as well. Basic standard stuff. I've gone for the raspberry. I'll have these like whenever I feel like I have a bit of a sweet tooth. Picked up the standard egg whites. I really should just buy these online because I know I can get them a, a lot cheaper online and spend them like three quid on 500 milliliters. I could probably get double that for the same price. We also picked up some no added sugar or salt ketchup. Also picked up some earbuds. If anyone gives a fuck, give that a good old wiggle in your ear. There's gonna be one person in the comment section going, George, earbuds are bad for you. Don't shove them in your ear. You're gonna get an ear infection or whatever it is. I don't give a fuck right now. These in your ear, just a peng feeling, just like orgasmic. Sex life isn't as good at the moment, so I need something a little bit to go in the old ear, just to, you know, oh yeah. Little. One thing which I've got back into doing recently is foam rolling. If you've been following me since my uni days, my final year dissertation was about foam rolling compared to dynamic stretching. So I've done a lot of research, quite, I would say, quite knowledgeable in regards to the benefits, the disadvantages of it, and comparing it to other types of stretching, massage, and stuff like that. So one thing I've implemented again is post cardio I foam roll my lower body and other days I'll foam roll my upper back I think that you need to do this frequently in order for you to actually see a benefit what I do exactly so obviously I'm applying pressure to the areas when I find an area which causes me pain I'm going to apply pressure to that area what a lot of people do is they'll foam roll down ideally you want to almost foam you want to apply the pressure as we are coming back up because what essentially we want to do is we want to get the blood back circulating around the heart. So uh, a lot of the time I kind of apply pressure, release. Apply pressure, release. I'm just gonna go through, I'll probably time lapse this because no one wants to fucking sit here and watch me phone roll and shit. picked up by the way it's an absolutely beautiful day today i picked up some flowers for the missus just to thank you because our relationship has taken obviously a bit of a hit since i've been on prep we're not doing things like we used to do we're not going out to eat we're kind of my my attitude my mood is a little bit down obviously the bedroom side of things isn't as good as what it, it used to be or as active as what it used to be just to to me being tired and stuff like that so i just want to buy her some flowers and just say look thank you for putting up with this fade it's not easy it's not easy and if anyone has experienced this themselves then just show show some love back to the rambling here and i'm back to the people that care if that makes sense because she puts up a lot of shit right now and um yeah it's hard because i have to de dedicate my st i mean it's a choice at the end of the day I, and i've got to do what i've got to do but i've dedicated quite a lot of my time to eating training doing my steps doing my cardio that we don't actually spend a lot of time together any, anymore so um i thought i'd buy some lilies uh, her favorite um favorite flower so i thought it'd be nice and a bit gay flowers are in i wrote her a little note as well saying thank you for dealing with my shit on prep i love you p.s couldn't find a vase I'm, I, I put it in like a, a jug of some sort but those are the flowers um she does she looks after me she puts up with a lot of stuff like i said earlier but yeah that's the least i can do if i'm honest with you i'm hoping she'll walk in like this and go oh my fucking god flowers probably not bro what is this shit you've got me why you got me flowers you soppy bollocks she likes her flowers so i thought they look tiny on the camera they're a lot bigger in person i don't know what i'm rambling in so i've arrived for my pool session for the weekend and then sunday i have the rest where i'm going up to see the boss up in birmingham so be on the lookout for some content regarding that you might be wondering like george you're wearing a jumper in this weather what's going on I've been like this for years. If you've been following me for a while, you know that I love wearing a jumper whilst I train. I do 
wear t-shirts occasionally. I don't wear t-shirts when I'm in the gym. I don't wear vests at all. I'm not the big key. I'm not keen on vests. If I, if I look at the, if I look at myself in the mirror, I'm just gonna pit, pit myself apart. Like, oh, you're looking skinny and stuff like that. So I would rather stay covered up, get a good sweat on and, and feel good that way. Yeah, I'm actually wearing, believe it or not, I'll be real with you. I'm wearing two jumpers today because I feel skinny. I feel small. I'm getting to that stage of where, you know, where you just wear a baggy jumper and it just makes you feel smaller than what you already are, if that makes sense. So if I wear two, it kind of puffs me up a little bit. So if you see me in person going, what the fuck's he wearing two jumpers for? Then you'll know why. But it's a really nice day today and I was spending it inside the gym, which I have no complaints about. Uh, I love what I do. Wouldn't change it for the world. And we're going to crack on with this pool session. I'll try, as I always say, go into as much detail as I can throughout the session to give you some ideas, some hints, some tips, some tricks, if there's any tricks. There's no tricks. I hate people that say tricks for this, tricks for that. There's no tricks. Fucking tricks. But yeah, we're, we're at the cave gym, so that should be a good gym. I always come here for my pool sessions, and hopefully it doesn't fuck me over like it did yesterday. Wankers. What's up, guys? So welcome to today's voiceover. I hope everyone is okay. If you're still watching, then please like the video. It does really does help me. It does really help me out, I should say. Um, I started off with pull-ups. I like doing pull-ups. I've had issues in the past with elbow issue, forearm issues when doing pull-ups, but it seems to be better now. Also, look at these calves. They are a good set of calves there, I tell you. I was quite surprised myself. But pull-ups to begin with, um, before I actually went into the gym, I was able to do like 15. This is when I first started bodybuilding. I was able to do 15 pull-ups, believe it or not. Um, I bought a pull-up bar, which I put in my door frame from Argos, um, and I just kept practicing and practicing and practicing. I started off by doing one or two. Then I gradually built my way up to doing like 15 um, and my body weight is dropping so doing pull-ups is getting a little easier for me now which is good um, I I'm, I'm, I'm able to do like 15 quite comfortably whereas before when I was a little bit heavier I was struggling to get 10 you know with just my body weight so progress is being made um, as I get lighter which is good we moved on to a barbell row um, my form was a bit meh here what I'm trying to essentially do is keep my keep in a fixed position can you notice when I'm doing this I'm my my posture is a little bit like off like I'm moving I'm swinging a little bit if that makes sense I really want to ensure that my hips are kept back my chest up is nice and high and it was just a meh sort of movement for me today sorry I did WhatsApp did ping then um, we moved on to a chest supported t-bar row this is a great movement to actually allow you to really engage with your back so what we're trying to essentially do here is we're trying to essentially keep our chest on the pad and if you can notice here I'm really trying to drive my elbows back while staying tucked in while staying locked and one thing is keep that chest on the pad as best as you can the hard stuff is done like at the beginning of the workout when you did your barbell row the hard stuff is done um, your lower back is obviously going to fatigue quicker than what your upper back is but when it comes to a chest support row you can really isolate your back because we're obviously taking away the 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 lower back portion of the movement this was more of a rowing uh, pull session for me this grip is one of the best grips personally for uh, really really trying to retract the scapula so what I'm essentially trying to do here is keep my chest up nice and high I'm driving my elbows back as far as I can and just ensuring that my chest it is remained fairly fairly high this is the upper back movement which a lot of people neglect um, the only time you're really going to hit upper back to a certain degree is probably you know deadlifting rat pulling to, to a certain degree a lot of people don't isolate the low uh, the upper back sorry so as you can see my elbows from this clip here right now my elbows are a lot higher uh, what this will essentially do is this is obviously going to target you know target the more rhomboids the traps that upper back where a lot of people lag in regards to detail and thickness here I, here I was doing about 15 to 20 reps we then moved on to a reverse cable fly what my thought process is here is I'm trying to aim for the corners of the room so as I pull I'm keeping my elbows quite high and I'm aiming for like let's say the, the bottom right and the bottom left hand corner of the room keeping my chest nice and high not using a lot of weight because remember we need to remember it's such a small muscle we don't need to use crazy weight to isolate it we then moved, to, moved on to biceps so with biceps I typically like to use uh, exercises which I connect to really well and uh, EZ curl I seem to connect with quite well and a preach curl is something which I connect well with I've stayed I've stayed away from like movements 
sense, which I just don't connect with, if that makes sense. So when it comes to building your arms, really take your time building or take your time actually executing that movement. This is this segment of the video. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next clip. So post workout we have 125 grams of asparagus, 95 grams of long grain rice, 250 grams of cod fillet with a little bit of mustard and a little bit of ketchup to go over. And I'm also watching Christine Guzman's old videos, no idea why, um, but that is my post workout, lovely. If you got to the stage of the video, comment down below salt. As I said previously, I'm going up to see AJ tomorrow, so be on the lookout for plenty of content over the next couple of days. Anything you want to see, then please message me, George Osborne 12 uh, especially on Instagram. Comment down below if there's anything as well that you want to see. So I appreciate everyone watching. The return to the bodybuilding stage is back. Episode 1 is ticked off. I sincerely hope you've enjoyed it. Um, make sure you like, make sure you subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.